if I'm looking a little rough, it's because I have a ton of errands to run today, so pardon me, excuse me. Lonely kisses passing by the river everybody, it's your girl Rana Cache. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my advice and tips for applying to college. Also, about where I got in because I never did a formal video on where I got in college-wise and whatnot. Um, so, all of that is going to be included in this video. If you see me looking down a lot, it's because I put, took notes on my phone. So, yeah. Before I get into that, I just would like to thank you guys for tuning into my videos and watching them. You don't have to watch them, but I'm glad that you do, you know? And I did recently receive a couple more subscribers, a couple more views, so I am very grateful. And I just want to say thank you. <laughs> I'm getting right into the video. So I want to start off by describing the application process and like how was it to first start off the application process was incredibly difficult and stressful it was senior year and i had a job and other extracurriculars and volunteer hours to worry about so also having to apply to college on top of that was just really really stressful so getting into how long it took um i took note that duration depends on the amount of colleges you apply to. Like for example, I know a girl here locally who got into 50 schools, but for her to get into 50 schools, you have to apply to 50 schools. Yes, but you will get some stuff in the mail saying like, oh, we really want you at our school, and if you apply, you get accepted. But that's technically not an acceptance unless you apply, um, which definitely takes time to apply to each school. A lot of schools are in Common App, which makes things a whole lot easier, but it still takes time to individually apply to each school. So it all depends on how much you choose to apply to and my counselor gave me the safe number of about four to eight schools i think eight is a good number i eventually end up applying to 12 which we'll talk about later in the video but it is a good number to apply to a couple safety schools some challenging schools and some like neutral schools um which you know safety is like schools you know you'll easily get accepted in with like 100 percent acceptance rate or like a really high acceptance rate compared to your grades and then neutral is like you probably get in, you may not. Challenging is more hard to get in. Those are your IVs, your um, high prestigious HBCUs and other stuff like that. When should you start applying? Personally, I would recommend you start narrowing down schools that you want to apply to and what you want to apply for come your junior year. So for example, I know it's really hard to figure out what you want to do in your life. Like, look at me, I went to school for psychology, now I'm a journalism major. But if you can get an idea of what you want to go into, um, come junior year that would be great so that you can see what schools specialize in that like certain schools are renowned for medical or business and stuff like that so if you can figure that out junior year props to you <laughs> and that will kind of put you ahead of everyone else when it comes to applying but I would just say as soon as you have your SATs and other materials that you need to apply start making your essay I mean it doesn't have to be perfect you can definitely the quicker you begin starting that process the quicker you can begin getting other recommendations getting people to look over your essay to make sure it's perfect and then you can start applying and you can just get it out of the way you don't have to worry about it um, but a rule of thumb that I heard when I was in high school was you should I think it's either you should start or almost be done applying by Thanksgiving. I don't remember, but I just know I pretty much was almost done applying around Thanksgiving. Like that first week of December, I think I was done. So my applications, like my, if I got accepted or not, started coming in in mid to late December, out all the way out to like April of the next year. What applications did I use when applying to school? Of course, you're going to want to use FAFSA, and that is what you're going to get your financial aid through and loans, subsidized and subsidized from the government. And I just think, you know, you need to do your FAFSA. I believe it's open every October. So literally October 1st, I'm on there because most schools are first come first serve. So the quicker you get that done, the quicker you can get some financial aid, some scholarships, some grants, whatever. I also apply to other local competitions and scholarships because it's never too early to apply. If you can't apply junior year, go for it because the quicker you can start saving up for college, the quicker, I mean, the more you don't have to stress about getting the money together in the end, you know? I also use College Board and that is where I got my SAT and um, AP scores from, but you can also use it to research schools. Like you can look at location, acceptance rate, 
and a bunch of other aspects that you would like to know about your school right on College Board without having to go to a bunch of different search engines and platforms. Last but not least, of course, I use the Common App, which I just mentioned earlier in the video. Um, it's just quicker, more efficient to apply to schools. Not every school is on the Common App, but the schools that are, thank you, bless your heart, because it made it so much easier to apply to schools. <sighs> Now finally, into the good stuff, into the nitty gritty, where did I apply to school? Now, um, if you haven't already seen my videos previously, I did a high school stats video, I also did a scholarships video and some other college related videos. So if you wanna know how I got into the schools that I got into, I will link those videos down below so that you can check that out to kind of, I guess, compare. Because I'm personally a person like that. I used to watch videos and like, well, this person has this kind of GPA and they got into my dream school. So maybe this is where I need the range I need to be around or whatever. But just to begin on where I applied, not exactly where I got accepted, I applied to 12 schools because, again, I was working, extracurriculars, volunteer and stuff, and I just was like, that's it for me, you know, <laughs> I'm not flying to anymore. These are the top schools I want to go to, so what's the point in applying anymore? Um, so I ended up applying to MCC, which stands for Monroe Community College, because they have a good 2 plus 2 program. You do two years at the community college and then two years at a SUNY institution, which is very good when it comes to affordability. Um, I mean, so a degree, to, a degree is a degree, is what I've heard. Um, but I did apply there. Oh my God, my camera's blinking. Let me hear you. Um, I also applied to Norfolk State University, which is an HBCU, because I did a tour there and it was decent. And I thought, why not? George Mason University. I never, don't remember doing a tour there, or did I? I don't know, somehow I just ended up picking that to apply to. <laughs> Georgia State University, which I was really big on going to Georgia for some reason. Um, so I applied there and I was like, you know, I have a good chance of getting into it. I think that was one of my like neutral or safety schools. Morgan State University, which I did tour there and I really liked it. So I was like, ooh, I might go. SUNY University at Buffalo. Um, I've been there before, it's very big. I really like the setup and the layout of it. I like the curricula they teach and the geographic location and how close it is to home for me. Temple University, I don't know, I was looking up a bunch of videos, I just saw like so many people having a good time there and it just really gave me that atmosphere like that I was looking for. SUNY Brockport and SUNY Albany because they were local and if I decided to do MCC I could do those with the 2 plus 2 program and it just seemed, you know, yeah. <laughs> University of Georgia because they are renowned for a lot of things and I really like the atmosphere that they provide. Spelman College of course because I'm a black girl and they're a school for black girls, it just made sense. <laughs> um, and then finally, last but not least, of course, Howard University because it's the mecca, the illustrious Howard University so I had to apply. So when it comes to acceptances, I got accepted to all of my schools except one and that would be University of Georgia. I'm not sure why I didn't get in but um you know you win some you lose some. To add on to that I do wish that I challenged myself more and I do wish that I applied to a little bit more schools. Yes 12 schools is a lot of schools to apply to but I do wish that I applied to like RIT, um, Columbia, and NYU because I think I had the potential to get into an Ivy and I just wanted to prove to myself that I could get into an Ivy. I just think at the time I lacked the confidence to apply to those schools or maybe I was just tired, I'm not sure. But I do, that's one of my regrets, not applying to at least one Ivy because I know I'm capable of getting in. If you feel like you may not get in or you're just like you don't want to, just at least, I think you should just at least put one Ivy on there just in case, you know, just maybe you might get in. Um, so I want to close out with some encouraging words or whatever before my camera dies on me. I don't want you guys to feel discouraged um, because you feel like your volunteer hours or extracurricular extracurriculars are not competitive enough. Um, or that you feel like your grades are not good enough. I just feel like it's not always about that those kind of things. Um, it's about what sets you apart and you should really display that in your interviews and in your essay so that you can emphasize how much of an asset you can be to school even though you don't have the best grades or even though you didn't volunteer everywhere. And on the topic of interviews, I highly recommend going in to do interviews. Interviews are what's going to potentially get you a bigger scholarship or a bigger grant and have people put a face to the name when they see it on the application and more than likely want to accept you into their schools.
before you make any final and executive decisions, please do your research. Do a campus tour, virtual or in person. I recommend in person because you can really get a feel for the campus and actually see other people there. Watch YouTube videos. I spent the entire summer watching dorm tours and days in the life to really get a feel for the campus and see how people interact with people, look at the diversity and all of that. Determine how much you're going to be paying after scholarships and grants. Look at all your application or acceptance packages and their financial aid and see what is the best scenario for you. Can you afford it? Are you going to be in debt? Sometimes that's a really big factor in people's lives. Um, sometimes it's a make or break decision so definitely do your research on that. Talk to people on campus about their experience. You know, of course, people giving you a tour, faculty are going to want you to go because, you know, sometimes they need that money <laughs> or, you know, of course, they just want another face on campus. But talk to also other students because they're going to be honest about it, typically. What do they have to lie for? So at least you can get an idea, a real genuine idea of how it is. Talk to advisors, counselors, and family members about making your decision. But ultimately, realize this is your decision. This is your make or break moment. This is your life. This is not determined by anybody else. So when it comes to making the final executive decision, you can take what they say into consideration, but just make sure you're making the decision for you. Not because your family member went to the school or because they want you to be this or do that. Make it for your decision. So before my camera dies on me and then I have to record this video all over again, I'm just gonna leave you guys with this. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I'm gonna say it again. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So even if you think college may not be in the cards to you, just try to apply. See if you get in. See if you get a good financial aid package. You know, just at least try. If you feel like you won't get into an Ivy League because you don't have the grades, just try. So with that, I am gonna, like I said before, leave my previous videos discussing college scholarships, my statistics in high school, like my stats, what did I volunteer in, what extracurriculars did I have, what classes did I have, my GPAs. I'm gonna leave all that down below in the description box. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye. You're a strawberry cake.